Hi, I'm Lauren. This tutorial is for those of you just starting out with Tapestry in Key Stage 1 and 2. I'm going to take you through the very basics of getting started. So logging in and going through the setup screens, which involve choosing the curriculum you want to use and setting your term dates. Then I'll show you how to add children and colleagues, set up some groups, and finally customise your assessment system so it works for you. If you want to skip ahead to any of those parts specifically, you can check out the links in the description below. We have a number of other video tutorials which will take you through the various features of Tapestry. You can find them on our YouTube channel, and you can also find loads of in-depth written tutorials for all things Tapestry related on the Foundation Stage Forum website. I'm assuming that if you're watching this, you've recently received an email from us with a link to activate your account, be that for a full account or just a free trial. If you don't have that in front of you now, but you want to go through the startup screens with me, pause the video and go and find it. It will be from no reply at tapestryjournal.com and it will look like this. Once you do have that in front of you, just click on the first link, click to activate Tapestry. That will take you to this page where you have to set up the password and PIN you want to use. Your email address and password will be your main way of accessing Tapestry and the data in it, so it's really important that it's not easy to get and that you keep it secure. The four digit pin is for the app. So after you've downloaded that and signed in with your email address and password for the first time, so it knows who you are, it will let you log in subsequent times with just your pin, just so it's a little bit quicker for you to sign in. You'll also be able to set up fingerprint entry and face ID if the device you're using supports that. As soon as you're done, press submit, and then you'll be able to sign in with those new details. On this first page, fill in what you want to be known as on Tapestry. Your name will be displayed next to any posts that you make, so bear in mind that it might be visible to relatives as well as your colleagues. Then, if the default country and time zone selected aren't right for you, you can change those and press continue. On this second page, you can choose which curriculums you want to enable. If you're only planning to use Tapestry as a communication tool and you don't want to track anything to do with your curriculum, then you can skip this step and just press continue now. If you think you will want to use it for keeping up to date with child attainment or what's been covered so far, you can click on the UK box to expand that and see what frameworks are available. Here, tick the ones that you know you'll use for your account. If you have multiple Tapestry accounts, you don't need to worry about what will be enabled on the others. You're only thinking about this account. Equally, if you're, say, a Year 4 teacher, um, but you know the other year groups will be using this account as well, make sure you enable their curriculums as well, because this will be for everyone using this account, not just you. You can choose at this point whether you would like to display the assessments made in these curriculums to the relatives or not. By doing that, they won't be able to see any of the analysis screens and they won't be able to make any of their own assessments. They'll just be able to see the ones that you make as part of observations. If you're not sure though, don't worry, just leave it unticked for now and you can go back and change it later. You might also notice this message appear at the bottom of the screen. That's just telling you there's a way to customise the assessment system for some of the curriculums you've chosen, but I'll come back to that later. For now, just click continue. This final screen will help you set up your term dates. If you are intending to use Tapestry to keep track of child attainment or curriculum coverage, it is important that they line up with your term dates. Although, because it covers the full 365 days and because it applies to every year that you're using this account, it won't be exact. Another thing to think about is whether you want six terms or just three. And again, this comes down to tracking. If you think you're going to want to look at what you've taught every half term, then you might want to leave it at six, but if you know you're only going to be interested in that termly, then you can decrease it to three. You can do that by clicking on the X's to remove a term. And if you want to add another one, just click add period down there. When you're happy with that, click continue to finish these setup screens and go to the main account. So here we are. This is where you'll be taken every time you log into the browser version of Tapestry from now on. 
Of course, it's completely empty at the moment, so you won't be able to see any data. I'm not going to take you through all of these different features in this tutorial, but you can learn about these and the others that aren't turned on by default in our other tutorials. You can find those in the link in the description below or by clicking on your name and going to Help and Tutorials. So we've covered logging in, going through those setup screens, enabling your curriculums and setting up your term dates. So now let's look at adding children and your colleagues. Both of those can be done from the control panel. So to get there, I click on your name again and go to control panel. This section is only visible to managers. So that's something to bear in mind when you're setting your colleagues up. If you want them to be able to access this and do anything within this section, they'll need to be a manager, which is the same as you. To add children, you need to go to the Manage Children section. Here you can choose whether you would like to add them one at a time by clicking on the blue Add Child button, or in bulk via a CSV file, which you can upload here. If you are adding them one at a time, it's quite a self-explanatory process. You just fill in the form that appears on your screen, and then press Save at the very bottom. I suspect many of you will be wanting to upload your children's details via a CSV file. Again, it's pretty simple. You just go down to the bottom of the page and choose the file with them in. How you create that file is up to you. You might choose to export it from Sims or your school management system, or you might choose to make it yourself. Either way, if it doesn't exist yet and you don't know how to make it, you can check out our in-depth tutorial on the topic. Once you've created it and saved it to your computer, you can click Choose File to open your File Explorer, find it, select it, and click Upload. Now you just follow the steps. The first two pages are just about matching up the columns on your spreadsheet with the information that Tapestry can hold. Tapestry will try and do it for you, but if anything doesn't look right, you can change the values just by clicking the drop-down boxes. On the third page, you just choose which children you want to import. You can either do them individually or just select all. You'll also get the choice of importing them with the status active or enrolling. As this is a brand new account, you'll probably want to choose active. That means they're ready to go right now and you can start making observations, assessments, memos and activities as soon as you're ready. Next year though, if you're getting your new cohort on here before these children have left, you might want to choose enrolling. This essentially means that they've just not started yet, but you're preparing for them too. So that's it. You'll see them appear in your children list here. You can edit them if you want to by using the edit button there, and you can add any profile pictures for them if you like by using the update profile pictures button. Again, we have an in-depth tutorial for that, which you can find in the description below. Okay, so that's the children done. Now let's look at adding your colleagues. This is all, that's also done from the control panel, but this time I think you're more likely to do them one at a time, so I'll show you that. Let's start by clicking Add Staff Member. The first thing to think about is what kind of staff account you'd like to give them. There's three to choose from. With Manager being the same as you, they'll have access to the control panel and have complete control over the whole account, including when talking to the Tapestry product support team. We recommend that you have at least two managers on your account. That's because if you've only got one and that person leaves or goes off sick without setting up another manager, your school will be really limited with what they can do on the account. Then there's full account. As with managers, people set up with this staff type will be able to sign in with any device with a browser and an internet connection, even if that's outside of the school. What they can't do though, is access anything within the control panel and what they can do within the main body of the account is determined by what you've set up for them in user permissions. You can see what those permissions are by just going to the user permissions section or by reading the tutorial. Then there's pin only. They're also limited by the user permissions you set up for them, but they won't be able to sign in with an email address and password. So that means they'll need either a full staff member or a manager to sign in first and then go to switch accounts. For all staff members, you'll need to fill in their first name and last name for them, but for PIN only staff members, you'll also need to set their PIN for them and tell them what it is, but they'll be able to change that to something only they know when they first log in. For other managers and full account holders, you can set their PIN and password for them, 
but we'd really recommend that you choose the email and activation link to the user option instead. By doing that, you won't need to worry about passing on the login details for them and making sure that they're changed. Before you set them up though, you should be absolutely positive what their email address is. That's because if you put in the wrong one and it belongs to someone else, then that person will get access to your Tapestry account. This last option on the Add Staff page is for attaching new key children. This is one form of group which allows you to link a class to their teacher. Your colleague will then be able to quickly filter the content on every page so that they only see the data relating to their key children. And those children will come up first when they make observations on the browser. Managers can also set it so staff can only see their key children. Although you can add those classes by clicking Attach New Child there, it's probably quicker to do it back from the Manage Staff page after you've already set up groups. So I'll come back to that in a minute. Then your new staff member will appear in the list here. The quick way to add your key children is here, but I'll show you how to set up official groups first of all. That can be done from the Manage Groups page. Then you just click Add Group. Give your group a name and a description if you like and then select the children. When you're done, press save. And there they are. It makes sense to set up a group for each class, but you might also want to set up other groups for within the classes too. For example, if you have some sets for subjects. This doesn't all need to be done now though. So if you're not sure, you can always leave it for the moment and come back to it to add more groups if you decide they'd be useful. You'll be able to edit the children and the details of the groups whenever you like, just by using these edit buttons. Good, let's go back to manage relationships for staff. You'll now be able to add the classes for each of them and it will be a lot faster. So remember, that was just in manage staff, then manage key children. Here you just edit their relationships and now you can select the whole group all at once. Okay, so you're nearly all set up. The final thing I want to show you is customizing your assessment system. You can get to that by clicking on settings, then going to assessments. This page shows you every framework and curriculum that you can enable and which ones are already enabled. You'll be able to see the ones that you chose in the setup screens. If you're still happy with what's selected, you just need to click on configure next to the key stage ones. You can change which ones are selected from here, but what you really need to do is customize your tiers. Every time you select a statement or a group of statements for a child, you can assess their achievement in those statements by assigning something that we call a tier, but you might want to see it as a refinement. What those tiers mean, what you name them and how many you have, is really up to you, but generally we expect you to have five tiers, with the first one meaning child needs extra help, the third one meaning national average, and the top tier, number five, being for the gifted and talented children. When setting yours up, it's worth bearing in mind how the children at your school do in comparison to national expectation, and maybe adjusting what your tiers mean so you can show progress in steps that are most helpful for your school. If you want a bit more help with how to do that, pause this video and go and take a look at our more in-depth written tutorial for setting up your assessment system. You can find a link to that in the description under this video. It's useful to give your tiers names to remind you and your colleagues what they mean. By default, they'll just be tier one to tier five, but you could name them something like needs additional help, below expected, at expected, above expected, and well above expected. When you're done, press submit. And now you're all set up to start making observations, assessments, and other pages. Please do take a look at our other tutorials to see how that's done. I've added some links into the description for the things we've covered in this video and for the things I think you might want to take a look at next. But remember, you can find the full list by clicking on your name and going to help and tutorials. Thanks.